Hello, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. I warn you that today's episode will be extremely sad. So if you don't feel like watching a heartbreaking episode, de depressing, um, deeply touching, but really very sad, then maybe postpone watching it for another time. They say that sometimes sad music comfort our own sadness. As, well, as strange as it may sound, it also makes sense um, in a way, because a common sense tells us that when we are very sad, what we need, what we should need, is something cheerful to cheer us up. So some bright music to comfort our feelings. But usually it doesn't work. The reality is that we need the music that transmits the same kind of emotions that we are in. Because we want to feel understood. And here we are with Nocturne in F minor, opus 55, number one, which is exactly that kind of medicine for our souls and hearts full of pain. Um, the piece that is so sad that when we hear it, even when we are very depressed and in a bad mood, this is nothing always nothing, comparing to what we are hearing in this music. Just listen and tell me if you agree. Thank you. 
that's the end of part A. What do we feel? Because I feel very deep sadness, sorrow, żal in Polish, depression and tears. I feel, I see tears. I see the face of somebody who is crying and tears. Okay, but now let's make an analysis because all I'm talking about is the poetic image. But let's make a cold, pure analysis. Uh, or before the analysis. We need, we, I need to tell you when this nocturne was written. It was published 1844. Uh, written, they say, between 1842 and 1844. In my humble opinion, it was written closer to 1844 than to 1842, simply because of what happened in Chopin's life. Chopin was hearted straight into his heart, deeply, with a knife, um, I would say, he was wounded three times, in two times in 1843 and one time in 1844 in May. First, it was the death of Wojciech Żywny, his first teacher, the man who he loved, who he wrote letters to, and he was all his life deeply grateful for him, even though they say he was not a very good teacher, but I don't agree because he showed Chopin the pieces by ba of Bach at that time, you know, 1817. Bach was not yet discovered by Mendelssohn at that time. Anyway, Wojciech Żywny admired Bach and he showed to young Chopin pieces by Bach. Mozart and all the best geniuses. Okay. That was the first tragedy. A few months later, his beloved, great friend, roommate, soulmate, the man to whom Chopin confessed all that he had inside, all his problems, his feelings, everything. Jan Matuszyński died on tuberculosis. He was not old. Chopin was devastated, Chopin was depressed and of course scared, but extremely sad. We know it from letters uh, of Georges Sand especially. She was describing Chopin as completely depressed and devastated after this death. It was like somebody cut his leg or his hand. That's how the death of his friend Jas Matuszyński was for Chopin. Next year, May, 1844. Nikolai Chopin, a beloved father, died. Do I have to say anything more? We have this music as a fruit of this. And it can't be more um, expressive. And if anybody tries to say that this music is not connected with Chopin's life. I can only laugh. It's impossible. Everything just works together. Okay, now let's make an analysis. Analysis will be very short and fast because this music apparently is very simple. The general characteristic of the first of part A to describe characteristic in part A, we can use only one word, obsession. Obsessively repeated one motif of four descending notes. And then this note, one, two, three, is repeated three times. And in between these three notes, we have uh, minor seconds, 
down and up. So, which, which makes the pain even bigger in the hour, in listeners also. Only in the first phrase, this motif is repeated three times. Then Chopin repeats the whole phrase. So altogether we have six times this motif in the first bigger phrase, in the first melody. Simple. What about the left hand? Left hand? Do you remember accompaniment like this? Nocturne in C minor. And also we have Nocturne opus 37, I think, number one. Yes. Also very sad. So every time Chopin wants to express the deep sadness, apparently he used the same kind of accompaniment in the left hand. Boring! <laughs> of course a joke. A bad joke. Not boring at all. It's the best way, because again we have a march. We have walking with difficulties. This is the best accompaniment for this kind of melody. A march, a funeral march. This piece is about death and about a pain. Um, let's now listen to this, what I, show, what I told you, three times the same motif. First time. Second time. Third time. Fourth time. So, you know, this is the reason uh, why this nocturne, I mean, when somebody plays it badly, it's impossible to listen. Because when somebody is, plays it without emotions, without feelings, without understanding, with a pure legato, poor legato, sorry, with bad sound quality, with the lack of understanding, then it's impossible to listen because it's you know every time the same the same the same the same all here depends on the pianist and this nocturne demands a very sensitive extremely over sensitive i would say pianist with a great imagination the pianist who can before start to play can picture and imagine the deepest sadness that is possible to feel. He has to feel it inside and then start to play. Okay, after this motif we have like the second melody which brings us some questions and brings us a major key to put a little bit of hope but this hope will soon be destroyed. Listen to these um, questions. First question. Second question. And then the answer. And the answer is terrible. With three times the same motif. Again the motif of four notes going down. Listen to this heartbreaking answer. Time. 
times somebody answered. And then everything starts from the beginning. And here we have a little bit embellished melody. But just listen how beautifully Chopin has done that. What here? Thanks God, Chopin is not embellishing this melody like he used to do in earlier pieces. You know, like if he wrote something like this, if he had written something like this, oh my God, that would be cheap. You know, it doesn't fit. And thanks God, I mean, thanks God, he was a genius. He felt it doesn't fit. Even if he could do it, he had the technique, we know he could. It doesn't suit this pain. So instead, he is just doing... And this is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, nothing new in part A. Let's proceed to the middle part, where the true drama happens. Like in the opera, we can say, or some theater play. What do we have here? We have one dramatic statement, motif. And we have the answer to this. And this is the first part of the part B. The dialogue between those two. The extremely aggressive bass and screaming, begging for mercy uh, chords of the upper register. For me, it's like almost like somebody is trying to kill somebody. Like in the theater play, Shakespeare play, I don't know. There is a trial of a murder and screams of a person who doesn't want to die. Listen. This was the first part. Then the second part, it's as if this person is escaping and we have more and more dramatic escape uh, but here we have two voices listen to these two voices but i play for you the uh, second voice one octave lower so that we can really hear the dialogue voice is extremely important. Why? Because this is the motif of one, two, three, four. Here we also have one, two, three, four. This is the motif, initial motif, the first motif of the nocturne. Very special. Okay, and the left hand is chasing. Like I will kill you, you know. Very, very, very frightening we are afraid we are scared when we listen to this music and this escape this it brings us to the biggest tragedy the biggest drama the climax and then everything stops let's listen to the whole part b
This is somebody panicking. This is a panic. Don't you think so? And we come back to part A. Now the question is, will part A be the same like it was before? Well, if Chopin were younger, probably he would just write the same thing. And then, you know, checked. The next piece is done, bye-bye. Um, this time we feel Chopin wants to express something else. He has inspiration and he wants to add something else. It would have been so easy for him to write the same thing, but he didn't. Instead, he is ending the piece marvelously. First of all, first theme is the same for the first time. And from here, the magic starts. I call it as if in this darkness, dark night of death and bad feelings and thoughts, suddenly stars of hope started to bright, to shine, excuse me. We have stars in the dark, in the darkness of depression. Listen to this wonderful magic, uh, I would say, impressionistic moment. I love this moment. With all my heart, it's my favorite moment of this nocturne. I love to play it. You can hear I play faster and faster. It's not my interpretation. This is what Chopin writes here. Molto legato e stretto. So very legato and faster and faster. Uh, well, it's not easy to play because it also has to sound almost like unreal music. The music that we have inside us that is not outside. So the touch should be as soft as light as possible. Listen. And now, what do we have here? We have first time in this nocturne in the left hand appears some theme, some person at the end. And you know, I don't know if you watched my videos about mazurkas, which I I did last year. Uh, at the beginning of the pandemic I started and I made videos about all the mazurkas. And there is a set of mazurkas um, where in every mazurka it appears the theme in the bass, and I described it as a, as a ghost of a father. A ghost of a father. This is Opus 59. If you want, please, you are invited to watch uh, three videos, three videos of the three Mazurkas Opus 59. You can find them in YouTube. I have the impression that here, because it's, you know, the father died just. Maybe the nocturne was already written when, shop, when father died. Maybe not. Maybe it was almost finished. Chopin added. Why he added the bass line here, here, like he did also in Mazurka Sopos 59, this is a question. That's just my thinking. Of course, it might not be true, but all of a sudden, at the very end of the nocturne, we have the theme in the bass. And then 
Lord, listen to this. Everything goes up to heaven. Another symbol. If this nocturne is about death, this is a symbol that the soul or souls of those who passed away are flying away and are resurrected or are going up. Very touching and beautiful moment if we really think deeply about it. We have exactly the same thing in the fantasy F minor at the end. Do you know? It's the same. It's exactly the same. Uh, the symbol is also the same. I will be talking about fantasy in F minor in about a month, uh, a few weeks, a month maybe, a few weeks. Just be patient and we'll talk about it. But now just listen the last time. Last chords, a kind of gesture of closing the book. Which, what chord is it? Major or minor? Major. So optimistic, resurrection, hope. Beautiful. Chopin is not that depressed to end this extremely sad piece in a minor key. Well, this is very touching. So also this video has to be so emotional. Well, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you see now more in this music and look deeper and that it inspired you to search and to think by yourself thanks a lot for watching me and i invite you to my next videos take care bye bye